Welcome to the Integrated Accessibility Standard Regulation Training Model for the Customer Service Standard. The Customer Service Standard requires organizations and businesses to provide accessible customer service to people with disabilities. Training on providing accessible customer service and how to interact with people with disabilities is a key requirement of the standard. Now let's watch this video for an introduction to accessible customer service and why it's important. As a customer service provider, Openly communicating and responding to your customers' needs is the key to excellent customer service for all, and that includes people with disabilities. People with disabilities do business, shop, and travel with friends and family just like everyone else. They're the people you serve. You might call them clients, members, patients, or patrons. Accessible customer service is about treating every customer with the same consideration and respect, understanding that not all disabilities are visible and that people with disabilities may have different needs. It's just a matter of finding the best way to serve them. It can be as easy as asking, how can I help you? And making small changes to your practices. Many of us will experience temporary or permanent disability at some point in our lives. Currently, about one in seven people in Ontario has a disability. That's approximately two million people. That number is expected to increase as the population ages as will the need for accessibility. In fact, it's estimated that by 2031, people at risk of disability and people with disabilities will represent 40% of total income in Ontario. That's approximately $536 billion. With that much spending power, it's essential for a business or organization to be providing an accessible customer service experience. It's the right thing to do, and it's the smart thing to do. By learning how to serve people with disabilities, your organization may attract more customers, build customer loyalty, and improve services for everyone. In this module, you'll learn about the customer service standard and how to interact with people with various types of disabilities. In this module, you will learn about the purpose of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act 2005, customer service standards, their requirements, serving people with disabilities, an introduction, serving people who have various types of disabilities, serving people who use service animals, serving people with a support person, serving people who use assisted devices, serving people with disabilities at home or over the phone, if there are difficulties accessing your goods, services, or facilities, and summary. In this module, you can pause at any time or return to a previous slide. This module will take you approximately 30 minutes to complete. Purpose of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act 2005 The Accessibilities for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, or the Act, is a provincial law. Its goal is to make Ontario accessible for people with disabilities by 2025 by developing and enforcing accessibility standards. The accessibility standards are the legal requirements that organizations in Ontario must follow to become more accessible to people with disabilities. They address key areas of daily life, including customer service, information and communications, employment, transportation, design of public spaces. The standards are found in the Integrated Accessibility Standards regulation which was established under the Act. Who is a customer? A customer can be anyone who is accessing your organization's goods, 
services, or facilities. They may include paying and non-paying members of the public and individuals your organization might call customers, such as clients, members, patrons, or patients. Customers can also be other businesses or organizations, also referred to as third parties. Did you know that one in seven people in Ontario have a disability? Who are people with disabilities? When we think of disabilities, we tend to think of people who use wheelchairs and who have a physical disability that are visible and obvious. But disabilities can also be non-visible. We can't always tell who has a disability. A disability can be temporary or permanent and many of us will experience a disability at some point in our lives. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act uses the same definition of disability as a human rights code, which includes physical disabilities, as well as vision, hearing, speech, developmental, learning, and mental disabilities. Some people see disabilities as the barrier but actually it's the environment that presents barriers. When you think about accessibility, it's important to be aware of both visible and non-visible barriers. For example, physical or structural barriers, such as stairs or doorways often come to mind first, but sometimes certain processes or policies can create barriers or providing information in a format that may not be accessible to everyone can create a barrier. Attitudinal barriers stem from the way people think or behave. They can be based on stereotypes or simply lack of understanding. But attitude and how we do things are within our power to change. Customer service standard, the requirements. Meeting the following requirements prepares your organization to provide accessible customer service to people with all types of disabilities. Create accessible customer service policies. Set up policies on providing accessible customer service to people with disabilities according to re the requirements of the standard. Make reasonable efforts to ensure that these policies are consistent with the key principles of independence dignity, integration, and equality of opportunity. Consider a person's disability when communicating with them. Communicate with a person with a disability in a way that takes into account their disability. Allow assisted devices. Let people with disabilities use their personal assisted devices when accessing your goods, services, or facilities. Identify the availability, if any, of other helpful measures your organization offers for people with disabilities to access your goods, services, or facilities. Allow service animals. Let people with disabilities bring their service animals with them into areas open to the public or third parties. In situations where the animal is prohibited by another law, Provide another way for the person to access your goods, services, or facilities. Welcome support persons. Let people with disabilities bring their support persons with them while in areas open to the public or third parties. Information the public when accessible facilities or service are temporarily unavailable. Let the public know when facilities or services that people with disabilities usually use are temporarily unavailable. For example, an elevator or accessible washroom that is out of service. Invite customers to provide feedback. Set up a process for receiving and responding to feedback about the way your organization provides customer service to people with disabilities, including what action will be taken if a complaint is received. Make information about your feedback process available to the public. Train your staff and others. Train all employees and volunteers on providing accessible customer service 
and how to interact with people with various types of disabilities. Serving People with Disabilities Introduction Openly communicating and responding to your customers' needs is the key to excellent customer service for all. Accessible customer service is about not making assumptions about what a person can or cannot do because of their disability. Inclusion, making everyone feel welcome and included. Understanding that people with disabilities may have different needs. Serving customers with disabilities is also about showing sensitivity and respect. A good starting point is using appropriate language and terminology. Use the right words. Use disability, not handicapped. Remember to put people first. Say person with a disability rather than disabled person. Reference specific disabilities when appropriate, such as a person with a developmental disability, a person who is blind or has vision loss, or a person who uses a wheelchair. Avoid sympathetic phrases such as victim of, suffers with, confined to a wheelchair, physical challenged, or stricken with a particular illness or disability. Now let's take a look at tips and good practices for serving people with different types of disabilities. People with physical or mobility disabilities. Only some people with physical or mobility disabilities use a wheelchair. Someone with arthritis may use a cane or a walker, while someone with a heart or lung condition may not use a mobility device, but may have difficulty walking longer distances. A person's physical disability may not always be visible or obvious. Here are some tips for assisting people with physical or mobility disabilities. Ask before you help. People with disabilities often have their own ways of doing things. Don't touch or move a person's equipment, for example, wheelchair or walker, without permission. If you need to have a lengthy conversation with someone who uses a wheelchair or scooter, consider sitting so you can make eye contact at the same level. If it applies, inform your customer of the accessible features in the immediate area such as automatic doors, accessible washrooms, elevators, or ramps. Think ahead and remove any items that may cause a physical barrier, such as boxes left in an aisle. If the service counter at your place of business is too high for a person using a wheelchair to see over, step around it to provide service. Have a clipboard handy if filling in forms or providing a signature is required. People with vision loss. Vision loss can restrict someone's ability to read documents or signs, locate landmarks, or see hazards. Some people may use a guide dog, a white cane, or a support person such as sighted guide, while others may not. Here are some tips for assisting people with vision loss. When you know someone has vision loss, don't assume the person can't see you. Not everyone with vision loss is totally blind. Many have some vision. Identify yourself when you approach and speak directly to your customer if they are with a companion. Ask if they would like you to read any printed information out loud to them, such as a menu, a bill, or schedule of fees. When providing directions or instructions, be precise and descriptive. For example, two steps in front of you or a meter to your left. Don't say over there or point in the direction indicated. Offer your elbow to guide them if needed. If they accept, lead, don't pull. Identify landmarks or other details to orient the person to the surroundings. For example, if you are approaching stairs or an obstacle, say so. 
If you need to leave the customer, let them know by telling them you'll be back or saying goodbye. Don't leave your customer in the middle of a room. Guide them to a comfortable location. People who have hearing loss. Many people who have hearing loss may identify in different ways. They may be deaf, oral deaf, deafened, or hard of hearing. These terms are used to describe different levels of hearing or the way a person's hearing was diminished or lost. A person with hearing loss might use a hearing aid, an amplification device, or hearing ear dog. They may have preferred ways to communicate, for example, through sign language, by lip reading, or using a pen and paper. Some tips for assisting people with hearing loss. Once a customer has self-identified as having hearing loss, make sure you face the customer when talking and that you are in a well-lit area so the person can see you clearly. As needed, attract the person's attention before speaking. Try a gentle touch on the shoulder or wave of your hand. Maintain eye contact. Use body language, gestures, and facial expressions to help you communicate. If the person using a hearing aid, reduce the background noise or if possible, move to a quieter area. Don't assume that the customer knows sign language or reads lips. If necessary, ask if another method of communicating would be easier. For example, using a pen and paper. When using a sign language interpreter, look and speak directly to the customer, not the sign language interpreter. For example, say, what would you like? Not, ask her what she'd like. People who are deaf blind. A person who is deaf blind has some degree of both hearing and vision loss. People who are deaf blind are often accompanied by an intervener a professional support person who helps them with communication. Interviewers are trained in special sign language that involves touching the hands of the client. People who are deafblind might also use the assistance of braille, large print, a hearing aid, magnification equipment, white cane, or a service animal. Here are some tips for assisting people who are deafblind. Speak directly to your customer, not to the intervener. The customer is likely to explain to you how they communicate with them or give you an assistance card or note. Don't assume what a person can or cannot do. Some people who are deafblind have some sight or hearing, while others have neither. People with speech or language disabilities. Cerebral palsy, stroke, hearing loss, or other conditions may make it difficult for a person to pronounce words or express themselves. Some people who have severe difficulties may use a communication board or other assisted devices. Don't assume that a person who has difficulty speaking doesn't understand you. Speak directly to the customer and not to their companion or support person. Whenever possible, ask questions that can be answered with yes or no. If the person uses a communication device, take a moment to read visible instructions for communicating with them. Be patient. Don't interrupt or finish your customer's sentences. Confirm what the person has said by summarizing or repeating what you've understood and allow the person to respond. Don't pretend if you're not sure. If necessary, provide other ways for the customer to contact you, such as email. People with learning disabilities. The term learning disability refers to a range of disorders. One example of a learning disability is dyslexia, which affects how a person takes in or retains information. This disability may become apparent when a person has difficulty reading material or understanding the information you are providing. People with learning disabilities just learn in a different way. Be patient and allow extra time if needed. People with some learning disabilities may take longer to process information or to understand and respond. Try to provide information in a way that works for your customer. For example, some people with learning disabilities find written words difficult to understand, 
while others may have problems with numbers and math. Be willing to rephrase or explain something again or in another way if needed. People with developmental disabilities. Developmental disabilities such as Down syndrome or intellectual disabilities can mildly or profoundly limit a person's ability to learn, communicate, do everyday physical activities, or live independently. Tips for assisting people with developmental disabilities. Don't make assumptions about what a person can or cannot do. Don't exaggerate your speech or speak in a patronizing way. Use plain language. Provide one piece of information at a time. If you're not sure of what is being said to you, confirm by summarizing or repeating what was said, or politely ask them to repeat it. Don't pretend if you're not sure. Ask the customer if they would like help reading your material or completing a form, and wait for them to accept the offer of assistance. Be patient and allow extra time if needed. People with mental health disabilities. Did you know that one in five Canadians will experience a mental health disability at some point in their lives? Mental health disability is a broad term for many disorders that can range in severity. A person with a mental health disability may experience depression or acute mood swings, anxiety due to phobias or panic disorders, or hallucinations. It may affect a person's ability to think clearly, concentrate, or remember things. You may not know someone has a disability unless you're told. Stigma and the lack of understanding are major barriers for people with mental health disabilities. Tips to assist people with mental health disability. If you sense or know that a customer has a mental disability, treat them with the same respect and consideration you have for everyone else. Be confident, calm, and reassuring. Listen carefully and work with the customer to meet their needs. For example, acknowledge that you have heard and understood what the person has said or asked. Respect your customer's personal space. Limit distractions that could affect your customer's ability to focus or concentrate. For example, loud noises, crowded areas, and interruptions could cause stress. Respond to the person's immediate behavior and needs. Don't be confrontational. If needed, set limits with the person as you would others. For example, if you scream, I will not be able to talk to you. People who use service animals. There are various types of service animals who support people with various types of disabilities. A person with vision loss may use a guide dog. Hearing alert animals help people with hearing loss. Other service animals are trained to alert a person to an oncoming seizure or to assist people with autism, mental health disabilities, physical disabilities, and other disabilities. Under the customer service standard, there are no restrictions on what type of animal can be used as a service animal. Tips for assisting people who use service animals. Don't touch or distract a service animal. It's not a pet, it's a working animal and has to pay attention at all times. If you're not sure if the animal is a pet or service animal, ask your customer. You may ask to see their documentation from a regulated health professional. The customer is responsible for the care and supervision of their service animal. However, you can provide water for the animal if your customer requests it. Consider other options if another person's health or safety could be seriously impacted by the presence of a service animal. Don't make assumptions if you can't easily identify that it is a service animal. The person is not required to disclose their disability or demonstrate how the animal assists them. People with a support person. 
A support person can be a paid personal support worker, an intervener, volunteer, family member, or friend. A support person might help your customer with communication, mobility, personal care, or with accessing your services. A person with a disability is permitted to bring their support person with them to any area of your premise that is open to the public or to third parties. If your organization is a public transportation provider, then fares for a support person must be waived when they are accompanying a person with a disability who relies on their support. This requirement is specified under the transportation standard. It is the responsibility of the person with a disability to demonstrate their need for a support person to the public transportation provider. Tips for assisting people with a support person. If you are not sure which person is the customer, take your lead from the person using or requesting your services, or simply ask. Speak directly to your customer, not to their support person. If your organization charges an admission fee or fare, be familiar with its policy on fees or fares for support persons. It's good practice to confirm with your customer whether they want the support person to be present while confidential matters are being discussed. People who use assisted devices. An assisted device is a piece of equipment a person with a disability uses to help them with daily living. Most assisted devices are personal assisted devices, such as a wheelchair or a walker, white cane, hearing aid, oxygen tank, or communication board. They belong to the person using them and are a part of their personal space. Tips for serving a customer with a personal assisted device. Don't touch or handle any assisted device without permission. Don't move assisted devices or equipment such as a cane or walker out of the person's reach. Serving people with disabilities at home or over the phone. The following are good practices that can apply to all customers. Tips for providing at home service. Don't arrive unexpectedly. Confirm your arrival time in advance. Respect requests made by a customer with a disability to accommodate their needs. For example, a person with an environmental sensitivity may require that you refrain from wearing scented products in their home. Be patient. You may need to wait a few moments for your customer to open the door. Introduce yourself. Some customers may not be able to read identification cards and may want you to use a password. Check before you visit. Keep your customer informed of what you're doing. Make sure that you leave the home exactly as it was when you arrived. For example, someone with vision loss will expect that their furniture is in the same place and could trip if you move the sofa. Tips for providing over the phone service. Speak naturally, clearly, and directly. Focus on what the customer is saying. Don't interrupt or finish your customer's sentences. Give your customer time to explain or respond. If you're not sure what is being said to you, politely ask the customer to repeat what they have said. Or repeat or rephrase what you heard them say and ask if you have understood correctly. If the customer is using an interpreter or a telephone relay service, speak naturally to the customer, not to the interpreter. If you encounter a situation where after numerous attempts, you and your customer cannot communicate with each other, consider making alternative arrangements they may work best for you and them. If there are difficulties accessing your goods, services, or facilities, if you notice that your customer is having difficulty accessing your goods, services, or facilities, a good starting point is to ask, how can I help you? Often there are simple solutions. For example, 
your customer uses a wheelchair and cannot enter your shop because of a step at the front door. You could offer to serve the customer at the door at another more convenient location by phone or by delivery to their home. You might also consider low-cost solutions such as a portable ramp that can be set out at your shop entrance on the request and if suitable to the situation. Your customer with hearing loss has a question. Ask the customer in writing if a pen and paper to communicate would be a good way to serve him. Remember, if you're discussing confidential information, offer to return the notes to the customer or to destroy them. Your customer can't reach some of your products because the displays or shelves are too high to reach from their scooter. Offer to bring the products to the customer. The menu cannot be read by a customer with low vision or a learning disability. Offer to read the menu out loud or post the menu online so they can access it beforehand. Your customer has a mental health disability that makes it difficult for her to be in a crowded space with other people. She explains her disability related needs when she enters your reception area. Offer her a place to wait her turn for service in an area apart from other customers. Your organization doesn't have automatic door openers. Be prepared to help open the door. Your customers are your best source of information about their needs. Being flexible and open to suggestions will help to create a good customer service experience. A solution can be simple and the customer will likely appreciate your attention and consideration. Here are some general tips to keep in mind when serving people with disabilities. Ask before you help. Don't assume the person needs it. If you're not sure what to do, ask your customer, how can I help you? Your customer knows if they need help and how to provide it. Don't make assumptions about the type of disability a person has or about what accommodation needs they may have. Your assumptions may be wrong. Some disabilities are not visible and customers are not required to tell you about their disabilities. Speak directly to your customer, not to their support person or companion. Take the time to get to know your customer's needs and focus on meeting those needs just as you would with any other customer. Listen carefully. If you're not sure what your customer is saying, confirm by summarizing or repeating what was said to you, or politely ask them to repeat it. Be patient. People with some kinds of disabilities may take a little longer to respond or to do things. Use appropriate language, terminology when referring to people with disabilities.